Hey fellow YouTubers, this is RC Limit Films bringing you a close-up view of the project I just completed which is a do-it-yourself uh, custom DJI Phantom 1 and this is it. Uh, it comes uh, put together with a knockoff uh, shell kit that I purchased off of eBay and this is what you get with the shell kit and I purchased this for about $47 uh, but it can go up to about 65 depending on the seller but this is what you get in the basic kit you're going to get yourself top and bottom shell okay where you can actually mount the flight controller on this side here uh, the LED USB on this side as well uh, and then you can actually put your GPS over here on this side and put some GPS shielding on there and that's what I did in here I went with the aluminum uh, shielding but you also get in the kit the actual LED plates, the clear lenses here that go with it, and a bunch of screws uh, to help you put it together. Along with uh, landing skids that come with it that kind of give you an orientation uh, of kind of an angle there. But as you can see with mine, I decided to go with actual DJI landing skids for the Phantom because I wanted to keep that look going. You also get in here uh, two counterclockwise and two clockwise uh, 9443 uh, knockoff DJI uh, blades. They're self tightening. Those come with it as well. And a GoPro uh, miniature anti vibration mount, which works okay. Uh, I tried it with uh, the SJ4000, which I use. And the first hover that I put out there. It was very, very slight jello, but that could be because of the fact that the blades haven't been balanced yet, and maybe these are a little too stiff, but I'm going to play around with it. And uh, I think the next video I put out to the flight, I have what they call moon gel. Moon gel is like a rubbery type thing that kind of, kind of dampens out vibrations. I'm going to put a little layer on the bottom here, place the camera on there, and go with that. But getting back to the kit here, you get a, some set of screws. Uh, a power distrib distribution board where you can actually put your NASA. It gives you the little place to put the NASA. And some um, basic decal stickers, which if you choose to use them, it's fine. But I decided to go with DJI. So that's what you get in the kit. Let's get back to what's actually inside the shell here. Now, without opening it up, I've already told you that I got the, the newer 2212 uh, 920 KD motors. Okay. But I also went with the Phantom P330D ESC speed controllers. Uh, two red in the front, two green in the back for orientation, just like the regular Phantom. And I went with the NASA VM2 Lite. However, I did uh, upgrade the firmware to uh, the 4.02, which people have been doing, that unlocks uh, the other capabilities of the NASA. That gives you controls for better IMU calibration, gimbal support, and other features as well. Now, if you're going to upgrade the firmware, that's pretty much at your own risk. You know, there are places on uh, Google you can find the internet that would tell you how to do that. So I'll leave it at that. But that's what I went with. Um, I was able to uh, take these motors that came with the, the bullets and I cut them off, and then I resoldered the cables uh, to the SE properly, like you're supposed to. Uh, now, using batteries as you can see here <clears throat> this comes with a very large and elongated battery compartment but thin and i was going to use originally i had 11.1 volt 3s 2200 milliamp batteries at 20 c laying around i got plenty of those and i figured out i would use those to start off with and i did and i did hover uh, but obviously i didn't hover for more than six minutes but that's what i got on that one and the battery was, still hadn't been drain to pass 3.7 but in the meantime I also purchased some Florian 11.1 volt uh, 3s 3000 milliamp 30 C's that kind of match the dimensions and if you can see here plug it in here I'll show you you can actually put it all the way in you plug it in and then you tuck in the cables as best as you can to hide those and then you close the door and voila make sure it's tight it's in there. It's a snug fit. But the battery's not going to move around, and I should be able to get longer flight times. And I haven't done it yet, but I'm hoping to do that pretty soon. I'll let you know how far you can go time-wise with the 3000 and with the 2200. 
So I'll just set this aside over here. Also inside here, I wasn't using the standard DJI uh, receiver and transmitter, obviously, because it's a do-it-yourself custom. I went with the FlySky uh, TH9X, which I already had that I used for my other quadcopters and helicopters. And I put an eight-channel receiver in here, bound it to the uh, transmitter, and also followed some YouTube videos that talked about how to set up the three position switch here for whatever, GPS attitude or for attitude, uh, which is for stabilization. Uh, GPS and attitude is GPS plus stabilization. Or fail safe, which is return to home uh, or manual, you can set that up. And there are a lot of YouTube videos that can walk you through that. But that's what I did. That is my basic setup for my do-it-yourself DJI Phantom 1 and uh, the first hover was successful. Let me re reword that. The very first hover I did, or the Maiden, it was bad, and I want to touch base on that. I had purchased eight of these uh, speed controllers, four red, four green, eight of these motors here. However, I discovered after the first two times of trying to Maiden it, that it would take off and then spin out of control. I'm going, what is happening? So I'll bring it back to the bench, taking it apart, looking at it. Uh, I notice that for some reason uh, one of the motors was running slow, spinning really slow. So I thought, man, it's got to be an ESC. So I thought it was the soldering. So I resoldered all the, the connection points and stuff like that, took it back out again, did the same exact thing. This time it was a little higher, came down and crashed, no damage. Thankfully it was on tall grass, no damage. So I decided to replace the, the motor and the ESC that I thought was bad, and lo and behold, that was the issue. Now I was able to last weekend hover, I got a GPS lock in attitude mode, and I was able to hold it there for about six minutes and brought it down safely and landed without tipping over. So just wanna let you know that the next time that I take this out will be some basic flying, testing out the GPS the attitude, checking out the attitude, and fail safe. And I'll bring you a video on that, describing that. So I just wanted to let you know it can be done. If you're out there and you want to create yourself uh, a project to build your own uh, DJI Phantom 1 or Phantom 2, you can uh, explore with it. Find other videos on uh, YouTube. Uh, make sure you uh, research what you want to use for speed controllers. Because I originally bought some Simon K 20 amp speed controllers that would fit in here. And I decided that for this project, I wanted to go with the originals. And I probably put that in the shell over here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use a NASA or an APM. But uh, I'll get to that when I get to that. But I just wanted to bring this video to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please tell others. Please keep subscribing to the videos. Uh, I'm liking them. And uh, happy flying. This is Darcy Limit Films. Bye.